There is so much to talk about in today's video. This is essentially the weapon and gear breakdown for Beyond Light. We're going to proceed to play the trailer, but again, if you've already seen it, feel free to skip to the timestamp above. But if you have not, for the love of God, watch this trailer right now. Guardian, crush them. Triple down. Relax, Guardian. You're scaring them. Huh, you like it? Fellas, did you see the amount of exotics we're getting? I don't got a count on it yet, but it's looking on the same level as Forsaken. Y'all remember when Forsaken launched, Bungie just unloaded exotics on us? I remember. I hardly got any sleep, man. We were doing like three, four reviews a day because there were so many exotics. Now we're going to break this down frame by frame. So first up, boom. Yeah, we see the Titan holding the new exotic sword. That exotic grenade launcher on the right there from the Warlock. Looking sexy. Then we see a slow-mo of the sword at work. That is a mean looking sword. Look at that thing. Just this big meat cleaver. And I know we're like really focusing on the exotics right now, but I gotta say, I like the new gear. New gear looks dope. Then we see our hunter wielding the new sniper rifle and a sexy new finisher here from the Titan. I I'm assuming that's a finisher. Is that a finisher? If it's not a finisher, that looks dope. So first up, let's talk about no time to explain. It actually generates a personal protection portal. Now I believe it's like this stasis portal, but you'll see it right here. He's throwing this grenade. He proceeds to get a kill with no time to explain and then it spawns this little old stasis buddy kind of like an arc buddy but it's stasis or at least i'm assuming it's stasis now i don't know what tricks it has but it's obviously shooting i'm not sure if it can actually freeze enemies or not or if it offers anything outside of just raw damage now, when we actually go look at the Beyond Light page, no time to explain here states that precision hits and hits against enemies affected by stasis will return to the magazine. So those rounds will return to the magazine. Stack this effect to summon a portal which will fire bullets from an alternate timeline of the weapon. Now that's cool. So it's actually not like a stasis buddy. It's uh, an alternate weapon from an alternate timeline. I love it when they revamp exotics like this. Moving on to the sniper rifle that we saw yesterday, Cloud strike lightning on precision hits now it shows some crucible gameplay here and he gets the triple now he only hits one of the targets which is the warlock there and the lightning proceeds to kill the other two guys now i have no idea if the titan or the hunter there behind the warlock are weak or one shot or at full health all we know is that this mega firefly explosion seems to have both lethality and actually a pretty big radius. Again, when was the last time we had an exotic sniper rifle that we used on a regular basis? We just don't. Now, from Bungie's page here, it states that Cloud Strike's precision final blows will generate lightning bolts at the target location, but rapid precision shots will summon an entire storm at the point of impact. Dude, that sounds nutty. So even though it shows just gameplay of Crucible, obviously 
obviously this perk is going to be nasty inside of PvE. The question is, is, of course, how many rapid precision shots are needed to actually summon this exotic storm? It might even require majority of the magazine, and then the final shot will summon that storm. And depending on the damage of that storm, this could actually be a good DPS contender. Now, the next exotic, the Lament. This is that meat cleaver of a sword, and it says Shred Barrier Shields. This bad baby is meant for dealing with barrier champions. And yes, that's actually not a finisher. Oh my god. That's just part of the exotic, which looks amazing. Now, it seems like it just absolutely wrecks barrier champions. I have no idea what level this barrier champion is, or even what level this activity is. I will say, for Grandmaster, the fact that you're having to close the gap, and you're right on top of a barrier champion who can insta-kill you, this sword has got to do some potent damage. Now, on Bungie's exotic page here, it actually says the Lament is a mortal blade, as well as a stalwart shield. Block with the Lament to rev the blade up, then shred through shielded enemies. And at its peak, damaging an enemy will heal the wielder. So I just talked about my concerns with it in in-game content, like Grandmasters, where everything can pretty much melt you. This is a sword that's going to be reliable, both in its damage, but also its blocking and healing capabilities. So yeah, it might actually have a place, and obviously so. I mean, we use swords a lot. Dark Drinker 2.0, come on. This just seems like a sword that's going to have a little more of a niche when it comes to dealing with champions, and I like it. Moving on to the next example. Exotic, our first armor piece here, Icefall Mantle. Replace your barricade with an overshield. Holy hell. You know, we complain about our barricades, or at least I complain about it. There are times when a barricade clutches up, right? But there's also many times I pop my barricade to just have an enemy go straight through it and melee me to death. Extremely annoying. But now, you simply consume your barricade and get an overshield. Now, granted, what's the health of the overshield? I have no idea. Is it the same level as like MKs? Are we talking one eye mass? Are we guessing? somewhere around 30 to 40 extra health who knows now from the exotic readout it states that icefall mantle stand tall against the oncoming hordes with this reinforced armor that replaces your titan's barricade with an overshield absorbing damage from incoming fire so again, doesn't necessarily specify if there's anything outside of that or even to what extent the overshield lasts. Because again, think about Crucible. You use your barricade before even going into a gunfight. Imagine three Titans aping you with shotguns. They just consumed their Titan barricade. They now all have overshields. Fellas, are we getting some juggernaut flashbacks? Yeah, no. Moving on, our Hunter Exotic Mask of the ba Bacris? 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 I think it's Bacris. Shift replaces Dodge. Oh. Oh, all right, so this scene right here just absolutely enrages me. But look at this poor Titan. He's throwing his hammer, right? All right, you see a hunter? He just freaking disappears. Did you see that? He's gone. You see, you see it again? He kills the warlock. Just to then have the hunter reappear and kill him. Now, this is not invisibility. Th this is gone. This is hunter stepped out of reality with a simple press of a button. If you don't think this is broken, I want you to just go inside of Crucible with a friend. Look at each other while both holding a shotgun. And then as you get closer to your friend... Just close your eyes. And then you tell me if you won that duel or not. Just close your eyes. That's essentially what this exotic does. I am mind blown. This isn't some like half-ass invisibility. Th th this is shape-shifting. This is Houdini out. Now, from the exotic readout, Mask of Bacris. Bacris. Don the mask to replace the hunter's dodge ability with a longer range shift ability that also temporarily cloaks the wearer during use. So, it's going to have more range than your dodge. We see that from the gameplay here. So, that's a plus and it close you now the question is can you take any kind of damage at all during this shift or are you just gone are you in that fourth and fifth dimension just zipping in and out of time i swear man i'm gonna lose it i am gonna lose it this fall with hunters moving on Athris embrace by the way i am probably wrecking these names now this is another hunter exotic superior weighted knife now i felt like the gameplay here did not really show me much we see a kill happening right here with a shotgun which looks pretty awesome but this then we see a double ricochet weighted knife. Okay, so maybe that's it, which takes us to Bungie's readout, which is actually pretty nice. So Arthris Embrace, the hunter weighted knife gains a second ricochet. Rapid precision hits gain a damage bonus and can
can temporarily stack enemies. Mm, okay. Now, obviously, this is made for bottom tree gunslinger. The question is, is how much of a damage bonus are we going to get? And secondly, when it says temporary staggers enemies, how much are we talking duration wise? This could actually be a really big deal when dealing with champions. And I wonder if you can stagger champions with this. Like I'm thinking not, you know, unless of course there's like an artifact mod for that associated season, like Inferno Whip. But that stagger enemies portion, that's probably got me the most curious. The second ricochet there is kind of like, yeah, that's cool, I guess. I do wonder if there's some sort of like passive target acquisition buff that's being applied here to weighted knives. Maybe when just wielding or using this exotic. Who knows? Now moving on to our warlock exotic here. Oh my god, you want to look like Sid? Don Chorus. Improved burns in daybreak damage. Oh, this could actually be an exotic made just for bottom tree Dawnblade. Bottom tree Dawnblade has essentially taken a back seat. It used to be one of the longest lasting supers. Not only was it one of the longest lasting supers, it was just a really fast super. Now from Bungie's exotic readout, Don Chorus filled the sweet burn. The warlock's daybreak projectiles deal extra damage and cause enemies to burn on contact. You also gain melee energy each time a burn damages a target. Oh my lord. Okay. Yeah, so this is gonna go either way. I mean, you can use it with top tree, down blade, or bottom tree. I'm just saying bottom tree might benefit from this due to the extension of the super itself. But you can see in the gameplay here, the burn damage actually taking out the enemies. Even your meteor targets that can take the initial impact of your daybreak to then just have the burn damage finish them off. Moving on! Our next warlock exotic, Necrotic Grip. Melee spreads poison. Now, it sounds very similar to Felwinter's, at least in application. But on the exotic readout here, it states that Necrotic Grip is a deadly caress compounded. Melee attacks corrupt enemies with increasing damage over time. Defeating a corrupted combatant spreads the corruption to nearby targets and restores your melee energy. So again, the more enemies you kill with this corruption, the more melee energy you get back, thus resulting in more melees and more damage over time to be spread. And again, in the gameplay, it looks like there's like two waves of this, but that's actually the perk itself. Again, when you defeat a corrupted combatant, this spreads even more corruption. Think Wither Horde when you land direct hits on targets. Essentially the same exact thing here. The question is, how many chains can we have here of this corruption? If it continually keeps killing enemies over and over again, this could actually be one of the best exotics for ad control. Moving on to our next exotic, Precious Scars. Revive creates a shielding aura. Oh! Okay, this is actually a really neat thing. So he goes in and he seems to somehow connect with his teammate. Now from the exotic readout, it says that Precious Scars prove your strength even when coming back from the brink. And then upon revives, the Titan gains an overshield aura that protects the wearer and nearby allies. Now, I don't know if you actually have to physically get a revive or if there's like a new revive animation. We just see our Titan sliding in and our teammate here gets revived. Now, granted, this is a trailer. So of course, they could have just cut out the animation of the revive itself. Either way it goes, you gain an overshield. Titan Exotics, man, are all about overshields right now. The main benefit though is the fact that it can be carried with you and your allies. You are a moving, protected unit. And in something like raids, especially when the team has a split up, for survivability, this could be the most clutch exotic for Titans on day one raids. Moving on to our next exotic, we've seen it in another trailer, Salvation's Grip, Launch Stasis Projectiles. This is that grenade launcher. And as you can see here, when it shoots, it doesn't just launch this like lob of stasis. It goes full crystal mode, baby. Look at that. Now from the exotic readout, Salvation's Grip, states that redemption is within your grasp. Each fire projectile will create a stasis crystal that will freeze nearby targets, charged to increase the amount of crystals created and the freeze radius. What's so neat about this is the fact that it states that it's going to create stasis crystals, therefore making us think that, hey, this is going to be an exotic grenade launcher that's going to play into our stasis subclasses. The benefits that we get from prolonged stasis abilities could tie directly into this exotic grenade launcher, which sounds amazing. Now, how effective it's going to be? It looks effective, but everything looks effective in promos, right? So that is all the exotics shown in today's trailer, although I don't think these are all of them. Nothing here seemed to be directly tied to the stasis subclasses themselves, other than like, you know, no time to explain which spawns that stasis buddy. The main thing, though, is I don't see any major exotics.
exotics that are like, hey, this extends your stasis super. This is for your stasis super. Now, this could be all of the exotics, which is still quite a few of them. And maybe Bungie's just trying to take a wider spread here with our exotics, having them play pretty much a role with all of our subclasses instead of directly tying them to a particular subclass. I just wouldn't be surprised if there's like maybe one or two exotics coming out the gate that directly tie into the stasis subclass. So let me know in the comments below what you think. Does it look good? I feel like I'm missing something. Did I miss anything from this trailer? Oh, I did. There's going to be a catalyst for no time to explain. Look at this. Portal fires faster. Okay, okay. So I'm under the assumption now that no time to explain is what the, the seasonal weapon, the seasonal exotic, right? Kind of like Wither Horde, Symmetry, etc. Considering it has a catalyst ready to ship with the weapon. Oh, that looks nasty. Let me know in the comments below what you think about all this, guys. I know we're still like a month out. But it's almost time to get hyped. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.